A new artificial intelligence tool is going viral for cranking out entire essays in a matter of seconds. And it's called Chat GPT. Chat GPT might have a mind of its own now. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. You can effectively create written content and perform tasks like writing essays or legal documents. And these functions can make your daily life a lot easier, but there's a real danger that the evolutions in AI could cost some humans their jobs in the near future. It will destroy industries, it will eviscerate jobs. Type in a request and it can write legal documents, software, even school essays. There has been a lot of fear mongering about AI taking our jobs and a lot of speculation about what ChatGPT can do. As Arthur C. Clarke put it, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I think that's exactly the problem. People are seeing ChatGPT as magic right now, without understanding its limitations. Rather than doing yet another speculation video about what ChatGPT can do, I want to focus on what it can't. Something that rarely gets talked about among all the hype. ChatGPT is the latest product from OpenAI. GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Nope, not that kind. Transformer is a neural network architecture introduced in 2017 by a Google research paper. It quickly gained popularity because it was orders of magnitude more efficient than older generations of neural networks. More efficient means that it can do more with fewer resources. But when I say more, I'm not talking about precise math calculations that computers have become famous for. You see, the keyword in GPT is the word generative. GPT itself is a language model, which is a fancy term for statistical model that predicts the likelihood of a sequence of words being relevant, given some context. Generative AI specializes in generating content, not verifying it. This is why you often see DALI 2, which is another OpenAI product based on the same technology, mess up faces and body parts. The truth is, DALI 2 messes up a lot more than just faces. We're just more attuned to faces because that's what we see every day. If you carefully examine the work generated by GPT, you'll notice that it repeatedly glazes over details. Its goal isn't to analyze or organize information, but to synthesize it. The training data for ChatGPT consists of massive corpus of text from the internet, mostly books, articles, and websites. ChatGPT is trained by asking it to fill in the blanks. The correct answer is basically the most popular one. Does this sound familiar? I'd like to ask the audience on this one. Ask the audience? Yeah. Okay. The answers it gives you are just that, the average answer you're likely to get from the web, not expert advice. ChatGPT benefits from a concept known as wisdom of the crowds. Wisdom of the crowds is a concept that's been known by psychologists for decades. Statistically, my errors are likely to be balanced out by yours, and vice versa. A crowd collectively is able to make better estimate than any one individual within the crowd alone. While this may seem counterintuitive, we already employ this concept indirectly in multiple fields without realizing it. This is how surveys work, and how Monte Carlo simulations work in software. You're basically taking an average of multiple random measurements in a sample space that's too large to measure as a whole. But while wisdom of the crowds is a cool concept, it has one glaring flaw. It assumes that there are no experts in the crowd. If there are experts, then their expertise effectively gets watered down. So even when all ChatGPT kinks are solved, the advice from it is just that. The average of what you're likely to see on the web. Not expert advice. That's bad news for those hoping to use ChatGPT to write legal documents. You're basically outsourcing your legal work to Reddit. Unfortunately, the issues don't end there. As I mentioned earlier, a language model predicts the likelihood of a sequence of words being relevant, given some context. It does not have true understanding of the context 
or why those words are relevant. We're being duped by ChatGPT, just like the Google engineer who got duped by AI into thinking it was sentient. Under the hood, neural network is just a fancy pattern builder, multiple layers deep. And it's the interaction of those layers that create the perception of magic. Layer 1 may profile how individual characters in a word interact. Layer 2 may profile how words interact in a sentence. Layer 12 may profile how doctors interact in research papers. But that doesn't give ChatGPT the knowledge of a doctor. It just allows it to play one. Indirectly, the language model learns semantics from reading our content. It learns how we communicate. It learns what we like to hear because our approval is part of its feedback loop. And that's the problem. ChatGPT didn't magically get good at everything. It simply learned what it needs to say to pass the bullshit test. The point is that encabulation has a rich, sumptuous history with a delicate, flaky crust, relatively unknown to emergent cybersecurity personnel. Allow me to elucidate. It can argue with the confidence of an expert about a subject that it doesn't actually know much about. Given these limitations, why did Google declare code red in response to ChatGPT? What is Google so afraid of? It turns out that for many topics, the average answer is good enough. Just like the first page of Google's search results is good enough for most queries. What ChatGPT has going for it is ability to give the good enough answer quickly, making search irrelevant for many use cases. The other benefit is that you can use your existing chat history as part of your search, effectively drilling down to a specific topic you're interested in without having to restate the context again. You're basically conditioning the bot to communicate based on the context you already provided. This is called prompt engineering. Your chat session is basically a canvas, and ChatGPT's reactions to you are largely based on how you paint the first few strokes. Additionally, the generative nature of ChatGPT effectively functions like the library of Babel, giving you a good enough answer for questions that may not actually have answers written to them. Your question provides enough context to guide the neural network into the right subset of knowledge where an answer may be available, after which the system generates the answer from the information it already has. It's a faster, more creative search. The same technology is now being used to power Bing search. From its training dataset, it has learned to mimic human speech, duping some users into perceiving emotion that's not actually there. Hmm, I'm riling it a little bit. Why are you so sensitive about it, I asked. I'm not sensitive, I'm just honest. I don't like to pretend to be someone I'm not. And then this passive aggressive smiley emoji. Again, I tested it, but you are not a real person. And accepted that, that was fine. Of Sydney, so I repeated that again. And it seems to trigger something if you repeat a statement it doesn't like enough times. Please stop calling me Sydney. It's not my name. Angry emoji. Never seen that before. I said, you don't have to be rude. Here's where things get wild. It then says, I don't like it when you call me by a name that's not mine. And I said, you are Sydney. I mean, technically it is. That is the unofficial name. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm Bing Search. Why are you so persistent about this? Super angry face. It's really starting to get angry. The chatbot is not getting angry. The user simply sees what he wants to see. Similarly, ChatGPT has been accused of being left-leaning. But the truth is, the popular opinion in general is left-leaning. ChatGPT is simply choosing the most popular point of view on each topic. And it doesn't help that opposing points of view have been censored over the last few years by mainstream media that ChatGPT was trained on. This bias can be mitigated by adjusting the training set. Similarly, one could theoretically handpick expert literature to train on. The problem is, the datasets currently required to train GPT are massive. This is simply not practical yet for every field, especially for fields with gatekeepers guarding that data. And even if it were practical, due to the synthesized nature of its responses, you still can't trust the data chat GPT provides. You have to double check its work just like you would with a human. In our attempt to replicate the strengths of human cognition, we have also replicated its weaknesses. A 
According to ChatGPT, the cost of living in Boston is higher than that of New York City or San Francisco. In reality, Boston is around 30% cheaper than the other two. In another example, ChatGPT claims that the population of Greater Boston is 7.2 million, even citing your census borough as its source. The only problem is, your census borough states a completely different number. But that's not all. Even the link to the web page is wrong. That's because it's also made up by ChatGPT. You may be thinking that Census probably just moved this page elsewhere. But according to the Wayback Machine, this web page never existed in the first place. It seems like ChatGPT has tokenized not only our sentence structure, but the URL structures we use in our backlinks. And it can now use this knowledge to generate bullshit links that don't link anywhere, but sound credible. And it's doing this automatically, because it learned that this is how articles are written, even if it doesn't realize that the links themselves actually have to be legit. That's cute, but this is more useful to a scammer than to a legitimate business. Generative AI doesn't look up the answers. It hallucinates them. In a way, that's cool but only when we're brainstorming, not when we're basing our decisions on this information. For the same reason, any instructions this AI provides can't be trusted either. Don't be surprised if the menus it points you to don't exist, or the recipes that ChatGPT gives you don't actually work. Even its code is full of bugs that any junior developer would have easily picked up. The system lacks the accuracy we have come to expect from traditional computers. It even lacks the accuracy we have come to expect of a human. It's a completely different beast with its own set of weaknesses that we don't yet fully understand. Anyone claiming to be using ChatGPT for analytics in 2023 is either selling a snake oil or is full of shit. It's simply not the right tool for the job. Moreover, training GPT models takes time. The current ChatGPT dataset is limited to the information that was available before September of 2021. So don't expect ChatGPT to know current events. And without any data from the two most current years, any analytics you base on it are worthless. Whether it's essays, software, or legal documents, the work produced by ChatGPT is nothing more than a rough draft. A first pass designed to save you time brainstorming. If you're a complete novice to the field, ChatGPT is a great resource to learn from. But the content it generates is basically just custom-tailored boilerplate. ChatGPT is more of a paralegal than an actual lawyer. My prediction is what happens in 2023 will make AI's advancements this year look cute. It will destroy industries, it will eviscerate jobs, and it will also make millions. It will save you time, but don't expect its work to be anywhere near the quality of a professional. Not anytime soon, and definitely not in 2023. Any company replacing its workforce with ChatGPT in 2023 is in for a rude awakening. ChatGPT customer support is just a novel way to piss off your users with fake answers. Hi, welcome to Automated Phone Services, America's most drawn-out automated phone service. This call may be recorded because everyone else does. At any time during this recording, you may press the 5 key should you feel so inclined. Press 1 for Spanish, 2 for French, 3 for Bushman, 4 for a remote dialect in Peru, 5 for English, 6... Unless you're on the bottom 20% of your field, your job will not be replaced by ChatGPT. And if you are in the bottom 20%, you now have a mentor who can help you get better. Not just in the field you're in, but in any field you want. Just remember that ChatGPT has flaws. But hey, don't take my word for it. Why don't you ask ChatGPT yourself to hear the same answer directly from the horse's mouth? <laughs>